yeah, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> At least one of us was on time. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And today is July 9th. It is Tuesday. Now, you know what to expect from me. I'm going to bring you a hot penny stock. A stock that I found through the day as I was trading penny stocks, which I do every single day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on every single market. No lack of penny stocks. But trying to find hot penny stocks, that's a knack. That's a trick. Well, one of the easiest ways for me to find a hot penny stock is to look at the charts. You can see heat in a chart rather quickly. And when you find a chart that has heat, go see if you can find a catalyst. Go through the filings, the press releases. Over the last 30 days, even a stale catalyst can get a hot chart moving. Well, that's what we got here today with ticker AZ, A to Z, Smart Technologies. I found her by looking at the charts. It's an atypical breakout chart. One of my favorite patterns because they break out more often than most patterns. What you've got is your 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious and your price underneath it doing the same thing. Then the 200 starts to ease up off that price and it levels off going flat. Well, that gives the price a chance to turn up and then start cutting through the 200 and that's when you get your breakouts. Well, that's exactly what we got going on right now with a lot of volume coming in. Well, when I came over here looking for a catalyst, it was a stale catalyst, so to speak. They haven't had any real new news since last month, June 6th, I think it was. But it was big news. They were restructuring the company, changing up their management, getting in some working capital, and they were updating their Flagstaff product. And that's the key point here. Their product, I think, was hot. I've seen it before, but they've made it different. And I think the difference is going to make all the difference in the world from trying to be successful to being successful. I like this stock for the short run, and I like this stock for a long hold. So, A to Z Smart Technologies, ticker AZ. She finished the day at 52.1 cents. She was up just a little over 13% today. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, which comes with benefits you should not overlook. Yes, it is free to trade on the major exchange. No transaction fees, and that in itself is great. But this allows you the opportunity to play your plays with strategy. I like to scale in, buy my stock at different prices coming in. I also like to do that getting out, sell some of my stock at different prices. Well, on the OTC, you're going to pay every single sale, every single purchase, and that cuts hard into your profits. On the major exchange, you can do that all you like. The other thing is you can trade pre-market, aftermarket, another Huge advantage that you can't get on the OTC. There are some of the biggest runs I have ever seen pre-market and aftermarket, and they happen fast because there's less traders. The algorithms are different aftermarket, pre-market. So it doesn't take as much volume to get that stock running. And the last thing I really like, there's more rules. More rules keeps it good for us. Keep these companies in line and we don't get taken like we do so often down on the OTC. So, what is A to Z Smart Technologies about? Well, let's start with this description. A to Z Smart Technologies is an innovative technology company based out of Israel, specializing in military technology and expanding into civilian markets. Eh, that is all wrong. Except for the name, that's the only thing that's right here. First off, this company is not out of Israel. They are out of Canada. And they darn sure don't work with military technology. What I find curious here, it looks as though they were using this name for this company out of Israel working with military technology, but the name most definitely better suits this company's product. I'm not quite sure how that happened. Maybe it's just coincidence. So let's take a look here at the company. We're going to start with a description in their most recent news press. A to Z smart technology brings innovation ease, excitement, and value to retailers and shoppers. The company is transforming brick-and-mortar retail with innovative smart shopping cart solutions that digitize the in-store shopping experience. This proven, in-use, friendly, sensor-rich, AI-driven carts enhance customer satisfaction and loyalty, minimize shrinkage, they're talking about theft, optimize retailers' operations, and enable new business models. The smart carts streamline in-store shopping by enabling in-cart scanning and payment, 
allowing users to bypass checkout lines while alleviating labor shortages. Retailers can optimize merchandising, store layouts, and promotions from data-driven insights, while shoppers get real-time information and personalized offers, turning a necessary chore into a fun and rewarding experience. Now let's go to the website so you can get a better understanding of what's going on here. This is what we're talking about. This is a 13-inch monitor that is connected to Wi-Fi, connected to the store's products, and the consumer, the shopper, gets to use this while they're shopping. But this does a heck of a lot more than just allow you the chance to avoid the checkout line. They tell us here that Custom 8, which is what they call this, has introduced an innovative supermarket trolley to transform in-person grocery shopping. The most recent upgrade to the custom design includes an all-in-one detachable panel allowing the company to use existing shopping trolleys. The last time I seen this product, they had this monitor on their own carts, their own trolleys. So if you wanted to buy the product, you had to buy the entire cart to get this. Well, they got rid of that because let's face it, most stores have a lot of carts and what are they gonna do with them? They're gonna throw them away? They're going to sell them? Really? Are they going to store them? Well, to avoid that burden, they've just got this detachable one that snaps on to whatever cart you have, and then you can attach all of your accessories to it. With thousands of carts deployed across four continents, thousands? I've got to think it's millions. The Custom 8 has a multifaceted solution that has simplified the checkout process by allowing shoppers to self-scan products and make in-cart payments. This facilitates a convenient, frictionless pick-and-go experience and eliminates the traditional checkout line or self-checkout issues. But as I said, it does a lot more than that. And I'm going to share that with you, but before I leave this page, there was one extra piece of information here that really astounded me. The this technology can go far beyond convenience by accommodating special diets and allergies, flagging items that have undesirable ingredients while also presenting you with those relevant coupons. So let's say you're trying to avoid high fructose syrup or gluten. Lots of people are trying to avoid gluten. Well, it's a pain in the butt reading the ingredients of every single product, especially as small as it is printed. I have to take my glasses, keep pulling them out, putting them on, putting them back, putting them on. It is a pain. Well, what if you could just tell your, your shopping platform, I want to look at products without this in it. It is only going to show you those products so you know which ones you can buy. So let's get some more information over here at the company's website. We are at customate.com. It's spelled just like that with the two in the middle. Now, this is a really good site. They've got a lot of great information laid out nice and easy. But, of course, we're not going to go through it all together. But don't let that impede your own due diligence. Now, this is a two-fold platform. Brings a lot of benefits to the consumers. But, of course, it brings a lot of benefits to the retailers, which is the primary reason they'd be interested in it. They tell us here that custom-made smart carts enable retailers to engage with shoppers on a personal level in real time from the moment they enter the store throughout their entire shopping journey. The platform seamlessly blends online and physical shopping experiences, creating a richer, more cohesive and efficient environment for both the shopper and the retailer while unlocking new opportunities for success. Some of those benefits for the retailer listed right there. For the consumer, with custom smart cart shopping, your experience just gets better and better. Here is where online meets in-store shopping, enabling you to enjoy a digital content-rich, cost-efficient, and personalized experience all by yourself. Now, what you do when you come into the store, you sign in first. You got to sign in because it is truly an online experience. However, if you have privacy issues, don't worry about that. You don't have to use your own name. <laughs> I'm not suggesting you use your neighbors or an alias. You can sign in anonymously. No problem. But if you want to cash in on those loyalty benefits, you may want to become a member of the store and sign in as yourself. Get those coupons while you're shopping personalized just for you. Get those buy one, get one free items. And who knows what other incentives are going to build into this platform. Then let's say you're looking for products. You don't know exactly where they are. They got a map. 
You're in aisle 12 buying hot dogs. Ooh, you just remembered you need ketchup. Well, write it down. You can take notes there so that you don't forget, and it'll tell you the ketchup's in aisle six. Type in ketchup. It'll show you every ketchup they got. But you wanted ketchup that didn't have any high fructose syrup in it. Did they even make that? <laughs> well, if they do, it'll show up on your platform screen, making your scan of the shelves and reading of all the ingredients a thing of the past. Now, when you're all done shopping, you can pay for it right here. This little guy right there is for tapping. You can tap your phone. You can tap your card. Voila, you've paid. You don't have to go through the checkout. Now, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> wow, they're going to get ripped off a ton, aren't they? Well, they would, but they put a lot of technology into preventing that from happening. They call thieving shrinkage. They tell us that shrinkage is a major and growing problem for retailers. No, duh. Especially for self-service checkouts. Our carts offer the most comprehensive security solution with five layers of protection against theft. They reduce shrinkage to a minimum by reducing the number of errors, mischief, and misscans. I mean, there are accidents. Things happen. So what are those five layers? Well, first off, you got your barcode scanner. You're going to scan that item and it's going to put it up as one of the items that you're buying. And what are you going to do with the item? You're going to drop it into the cart. Well, they have strategic cameras on the cart. Don't know exactly where they are, but they're watching the products in the cart from different angles. They can see what you dropped in. This is being controlled by AI. Now, they're not watching you. You know, they're watching the goods in the cart. Also, they have a scale on these carts. Everything has its own weight. So if you've got 20 items that weigh up this much, but you're coming up with extra weight, chances are you've got products in there. And it'll tell you, Junior over here threw two bags of gummies while you had your back turn. You can get those out. They also have RFID. This is radio frequency identification. They implement this on the price tags. They can either pull it off or they can neutralize it. So before you walk out the door and set off any bells, you're in good shape. So they've got all these different things, including detection of anomalies in behavior. I'm not quite sure what that is. Is that Junior throwing in the gummies? I'm not quite sure. But they have got a lot going on here, folks, to make sure that they don't get ripped off. If they did, they probably wouldn't do this. So things are actually looking pretty good in that sector. I'll bet you they get ripped off more in the self-checkout where we scan in front of the cameras than they will with these. So now you've got an idea what the company is doing. Let's go take a look at that stock. Relative volume for AZ. Whoa! Whoa! What a jump, right? What a jump. The average volume has been about 88,000 shares over the last 30 days. Today, she is up at 1.2 million. That's a huge jump, folks, at least 12, 15 times her normal volume. Share structure for AZ, not bad. Outstanding share count is about 41 million. They don't tell us how many shares the insiders own. They don't give me an unrestricted, which is where I normally get my float. Though I've got a buddy that tells me to use this number right here. Well, you could if they had them all together. This is the DTC. This is where all the shares funnel through back and forth. And this is where you can get your float. But I'm sure this isn't everything. Now, they got a float down here, but that's from 2021. So I'm not going to count on that either. So to be honest, I don't know what the float is. All I can tell you is it can't be higher than the outstanding share count. So it's not going to be any higher than 41 million. And it could be considerably less. Whatever it is, if it is up to 41 million, that's not a bad float at all, folks. Anything under 100 million is a decent float. Market cap for AZ. We're just getting to 19 million. Financials for the company. How are they doing on the bucks? Let's see what we got going on here. All right. Over the last four years, things have been growing. Wow, look at these jumps, folks. Now, we do have to add three zeros to any of these numbers down here. So back in 2020, they were doing just over a million dollars, and they were bringing in profits of 215000 Looks about 20% that they were pulling in. Then they pushed that up to two and a half times to $2.6 million, kicked that up to 9.3 in 2022, and pushed that to 11.3. And the profits are growing right along with them. 
Looks like the profits are actually getting bigger now. We've got a stronger margin there. Let's take a look at our quarterly reports. Eh, we don't get them on the NASDAQ. It's not all the time. Let's jump down to the balance sheet. We are looking at the quarterly balance sheet, which is what I like to look at. Money in the bank. Remembering those three zeros. We've got $2.2 million in the bank. Total assets, we got about $8.5 million. Total liabilities is less, about $6 million. So we are holding positive stockholder equity here of $2.5 million. That's looking fine to me. Disclosures for A to Z. It's C. Oh, nothing here since May. So let's just jump into that news. So this is all the news they show us here going back to April 18th and up to June 6th. And I found two pieces here that we need to take a look at. One that came out April 26th and one that came out June 6th. Now I actually ran over to Yahoo to find this news. Actually, I was checking to see if there was any other news that maybe just didn't get listed over at the OTC. There wasn't, that's all the news there is. So taking a look at that first piece of news that came out April 26th, uh, A to Z Smart Technology receives NASDAQ notice regarding minimum bid price and minimum market value of listed securities. They are out of compliance. They were contacted April 24th that they are not meeting the minimum bid price of a dollar. We're at about 55 cents roughly. They are also not maintaining the minimum market cap. We just saw about 18 million. They're supposed to be at 35 million. Now they have got till October 21st of this year to fix these two problems. And it's really up to us. If we will bid that price up over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days, not only will that fix this problem, it'll fix this problem. Because the market cap is figured out by taking the price and multiplying it times the shares. Well, once we get the price over a dollar, multiply it times 41 million shares, you got $41 million in the market cap. So all we got to do is push that price up. The company can't do anything. If we fail to get it there by October 21st, the company has one of three options to consider. One, they can't appeal it. That will buy us some more time, about 45 days while we're waiting for the hearing. If the hearing doesn't happen for whatever reason, there's one of two other options. They either have to do a reverse stock split or allow themselves to go down to the OTC. Either way, it sucks for us. So come on, folks, let's get this price up over a dollar. The other piece of news came out June 6th. This is the piece of news I told you was big. A to Z Smart Technologies provides update on strategic corporate developments and product readiness. Now, there is a lot of details in here, and I'm not going to go through them all, but I want to touch on to a few of them. Mr. Gotti Gross, the new CEO of A to Z, commented, we are thrilled with the progress we have made in refining our corporate structure, advancing our product capabilities, and positioning Customate as a leading solution in the smart retail space. Now, this is important. The initial deployment of Customate will commence across at least three chains on three continents, including, oh boy, <laughs> Yochanioff in Israel, Morton Williams in New York, and Monopri in France. I'd never heard of any of those. Additionally, custom-made carts have been shipped to local partners in France, Romania, Central America, Thailand, and Australia in anticipation of further deployments. That's getting them out there. I mean, that's globally, folks. Now, it'll be nice when you get to say, Walmart or something. Now, I don't know how big these chains are that they're talking about. Maybe they're not that big and maybe that's where they need to start. Smaller chains, get their reputation down there so that everybody can see what's going on. Start some chatter and then you start getting your bigger chains bringing them on. Imagine if Walmart took this on. That would be a huge contract. Now, as I said, the company has also brought in some money a to Z successfully raised an aggregate $5.7 million through the issuance of both restricted stock, about $2.4 million of that, and unrestricted stock, about $3.3 million. And some of that stock was bought off the market, you know, 
not private. These are shares on the market. About a half a million dollars were bought by their own directors. So there's a lot of things that are going on right now, but there is no current news. There's nothing telling us what's happening. I see them expanding into many countries. They are in a few stores right now. I've got to expect they're approaching every single store they possibly can. And the next piece of news is probably going to be news about a contract with another store, then another store. And then we're going to see the revenues exploding. Remember folks, they were making revenues with that cart, the entire cart. What do you think they're going to do now just with the trading uh, monitor that snaps onto carts you already own? I think, as I said at the beginning of this video, this is going to make the difference between them trying to be successful and being successful. All right, let's go take a look at that hot chart now. As I promised, we're going to do some charting now. We're going to do this on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at ticker AZ. This is A to Z Smart Technologies. Got her opened up to a six month, four hour view. And as you can see, she's been in a downtrend this entire time until right now. Almost six months ago, we had a high of $1.84. She was banging her head up against that 200 day SMA, but not getting anywhere. She started to fall, hit a low here of about a buck 22 in February and tried to break out again. Futile attempt. The 200 day SMA is just too steep. You jump up there and try to stay, you're going to slip and fall and fall hard. Well, she stayed up there too long. She slipped and fell and fell hard. All the way down here to about 36 cents. Right there, we've got a very strong support that she has been sitting on for months until here recently when she has started to break out. Now, while we're here, let's grab a few other SNRs, supports and resistances. I'm going to grab one right here. This big poke came down to it. This big poke came down to it. We got all this sitting on top of it. That is at a buck three. That would get us out of hot water with the NASDAQ. That would get our minimum bid price taken care of and the market cap as well. Grab another one. We've got a soft one right here. Looking at all these head butts right there. This is at about 76, 77 cents. And we'll grab one more about right in this area right there where all of this is hitting its head and this is hitting its head and that is at 59 and we are currently at 55. Our volume is getting strong these last few days and our oscillators are all on fire. Every single one of them is going to the moon. RSI is still climbing up there at 67. Let's drop down to that 20 day one hour view. Well you can see she is sitting solid on that support here at 36 cents, working her way over that 200 very slowly. And then right here, folks, magic happened. Every single SMA crossed the 200 and that got the price climbing on her nine day SMA. She threw a foot down and pushed off of that 200. And there she goes, riding that nine day escalator through this resistance at 59, hitting a high of 65, then falling back in a controlled drop down to our nine day SMA, which she bounced off of many times and is still climbing. All of our SMAs are curved up and starting to climb, including our 200 day SMA. Volume has been getting stronger the last few days with most of the volume coming in today. Oscillators, they've cooled down a little bit. We had a huge jump here and she did fall from 65 back down to 53. It was a controlled fall, but the oscillators have all cooled off. Most of them are going sideways with just a hint of a dip on them right now. Let's take a look at our five day, five minute. Well, she's finally got off of that strong support. She started to push away from it. She got an extreme high away from it, balanced it all by dropping real fast, balancing the whole thing, and then popped right back up to where she was and began her climb. I like to see this folks. When, when I see a big climb and then a big drop, immediately side by side, I expect it to come back to neutral ground and start to do its thing. And we had a nice takeoff here from 37 cents up to 65 cents, almost a hundred percent broke through that strong resistance of 59 fell back to our 50 day SMA, did a rubber ball bounce, went underneath the water like a rubber ball and came back up. And right now she is sitting on top of her 50 day SMA looking pretty sweet there. We are underneath our 200 haul. I would like to see her get on top of that. Absolutely. 
Now, let me back up to the 15 minute. All right, this is more controlled, isn't it? You can see she is bouncing off of her 50 day, but here she is only falling back to her 200 haul, and that's where she's sitting. She did not come all the way down to the 50 here. She is in a controlled environment. This is looking really good. Our oscillators are still a little weak over here, but things look like it could take off, folks. Now, I'm liking this stock because the chart is hot. I like what I'm reading about the company. What we need now is a piece of news, a PR, a filing to come out saying we just closed the deal. We got this new contract with this store or that store. I think that'll get this thing ripping considering she is already picking up momentum and starting to climb. Do some more due diligence out there, folks. I didn't cover everything. You know it. I know it. And you know, the more you know, the more you're going to grow, right? See you, folks. Thank you.